single raid on April 25th of this year, 8th Air Force heavies smashed Pilsen, Czechoslovakian supply point for the Austrian redoubt, where it was expected the Nazis would attempt the last stand. Battering these marshalling yards prevented vital shipment of materiel from Pilsen, last heavy industry area left to the Germans. 500 heavy bombers, escorted by 500 fighters, beat through intense ACAG to produce this bomb damage. The Skoda armament works at Pilsen, seized by Hitler in March of 1939, was a prime target. This Gehring controlled armament plant made all kinds of guns, ammunition, bombs, mines, tanks, and armored cars. The plant, third largest in Nazi Germany, crawled over 320 acres and employed 30,000 workers. Twelve days after the attack that wrecked these Pilsen targets, the war in Europe was over. Illustrative of Germany's progress in aviation is the rocket jet plane ME-163, introduced to combat in the summer of 1944. These captured German films present an interesting study of the plane. External features of the ME-163 are short, squat fuselage, sharply swept back wings, and its single fin and rudder without tailplane or elevators. Tremendous jet thrust makes takeoff very fast. After takeoff, the undercarriage is jettisoned to save weight for the ME-163 is a short-range airplane in which all is sacrificed to permit a fast-climbing, single attack and breakaway. Rate of climb is 10,000 feet a minute. Low-grade fuel creates long white contrails. Speed varies in flight from 150 to 600 miles an hour. Endurance at full speed is limited to eight minutes, but gliding between short bursts increases flight duration to about an hour. Retractable skid is used for landing. The skid provides a method of braking, and landing can be made even on an unprepared field. Since the Germans probably passed on their plans for jet propulsion to Japan, it's possible that similar planes will appear in the Pacific. Speed of the ME-163 impaired its maneuverability. Our fighters could turn inside them and generally outfought them as the following gunsight aiming point camera pictures show. One of six Air Force floating repair units providing emergency maintenance for aircraft in the Pacific is at Puerto Princesa in the Philippines. Helicopters are standard equipment on these converted Liberty ships to speed transportation for key personnel, tools and small parts whenever aircraft repairs are urgently needed. Aircraft repair facilities permanently emplaced on shipboard enable the units, known as floaters, to move along with invasions and provide necessary work in any fluid tactical situation until an air depot is set up on land. Off Iwo Jima, one of the floaters has been performing outstanding service, mainly in B-29 repair. There are about 400 Air Force personnel aboard each floater. They wear the blue dungarees and white hats of the Navy, but the shoulder patch of the 20th Air Force. Merchant seamen under the supervision of the Army Transportation Corps actually sail the floaters, and guns are manned by Army gunners and Naval Armed Guard Service personnel. The vessel's shops include almost every facility necessary for extensive repair. Sheet metal, machine, turret, ordnance, welding, electrical, electroplating, propeller, photo, Drafting and radio are some of the sections equipped to contribute varied services. 
The helicopter brings old parts right up from the line and carries back repaired parts to the service group that reinstalls them. Here, instrument supplies and small governors are being sent back. helicopter returns with the repaired parts, crew chiefs are waiting to get the big planes in shape for the next delivery to Japan. Many superports have been able to make their scheduled strikes because of the maintenance and repair provided by the floating aircraft units and their seagoing Air Force's crew. Captured Jap fighter Nick affords our technical air intelligence first-hand study in flight tests conducted at Clark Field, Manila. The Nick is a two-place day and night fighter with twin radial air-cooled engines. Nick's fat underslung nacelles look almost too heavy for its long lean fuselage and sharply pointed nose. Its top speed is about 345 miles an hour at 21,000 feet. Nick's best feature is its firepower. It carries two 12.7 millimeter machine guns in the nose in addition to a 20 millimeter or a 37 millimeter cannon. Rear gunner operates a 7.9 millimeter flexible machine gun. However, lack of maneuverability limits the effectiveness of its fixed guns. Jap technical progress in aviation is improving, but Clark Field tests confirm the fact that it does not match ours. On June 21st, Mitchells of the Jungle Air Force bombed Kenegawa, North Borneo. 3,200 rounds of 50 caliber ammunition and 100 pound general purpose bombs were used to strafe and bomb the town itself and two airstrips. The Japs were attempting to repair the fields in order to fly Jap officials out of Borneo before the invasion engulfed them. But with the Kenegawa Air Drome hit on five different occasions during the week and our Air Force controlling Borneo skies, evacuation by air was virtually impossible. On June 22, 98 Mariana-based superports hit Kure on Japan's home island of Kyushu. General purpose bombs were dropped on the Kure naval arsenal. Meantime, 300 other superports were bombing aircraft manufacturing plants and an oil refining center at other points on Honshu. Bombing results were good to excellent. The naval arsenal at Kure, believed to be Japan's principal one, produces a large percentage of heavy automatic anti-aircraft weapons and naval guns all types of shells, torpedoes, gun sights, periscopes, radio, and other equipment used by the Navy. It is also an administrative center and explosive stores area. typical of the week's bombing of Jap industrial targets. By mid-July, the 29s had bombed Japan for more than 40 consecutive days, and plans for round-the-clock bombing were announced at Guam by our Strategic Bombing Command after a 2000 plane raid, biggest air blow of the Pacific War, had blasted Jap airfields and laid waste production centers.